All right, so I have six spiritual lessons from the movie Inside Out 2, okay? Um, I just saw it last night, um, and uh, it was a great movie, Pixar, you know. You, you always go to a Pixar movie and you're gonna see your people crying and, and uh, I definitely shed a few tears last night. Uh, very powerful movie in a lot of ways. And um, there's some wonderful spiritual lessons. I'm gonna get to them. It's a kid's movie for adults, really. I mean, and that's what the genius of Pixar films is that these movies, I mean, they're for kids too, but they're really for adults, the deeper ones, right? So, see the movie first, because there's going to be spoilers. Um, okay, number one. And I got like a, some notes here. Um, we have voices in our head. <laughs> we have emotions in our body. I mean, I know it's duh, but... You know, you, 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 you don't re I mean, it took me until I was 35 when I had an awakening and started doing spiritual work and reading spiritual books that I realized that my mind is fucking nuts, you know? I, I'm crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm my like bi biggest bully, right? And, you know, most of those voices cause suffering, right? Most of those voices cause suffering. Um, it's like the, the Buddha's uh, first noble truth, life is suffering. Well, this is why, that, that's anxiety right there. There's anger, right? There's fear, sadness. And then the new emotions, uh, envy, jealousy, boredom, or ennui, which is what a lot of us could go through after uh, awakening. Uh, there's embarrassment and shame. I'm going to put shame with that. that. That was a big one for me. Shame. And uh, I think she's disgust discuss um, and joy of course joy you know joys this is what we want when we go on the spiritual path or this is how we feel I'm getting ahead of myself but there's joy and now it's good it's good to cultivate joy and positive habits the mind i'm i'm not i'm not saying that's a wrong and i'm going to get get to number two about that but i want to bring up in acting classes there's something called like the five basic emotions you know it's mad glad sad scared and shame so we got Mad, anger, glad, joy, sad, right here, sadness, uh, mad, glad, scared, fear, right there, and shame, right? And it's kind of messed up if you think about it because there's only one positive emotion glad or joy or happiness or peace compassion you know just love i guess love could be you know and and i don't want to get into this well this isn't an emotion or this is an emo this is a 
an emotion and this is not an emotion. I don't want to play that game. I'm just calling these all emotions, okay? Oh, their feelings or their, I don't know. I'm not playing that game with those perfectionist wordsmiths out there. So, um, yes, that's right. I'm getting angry. Um, but there's just, there's glad. So there's, there's one glad. Okay. Hey, but glad. Yay. And then there's mad one, sad two, scared three, mad, glad, sad, scared, and shame four. So there's four, four to one, right? Four to one. No wonder we're, we're, we, we're suffering, right? It's like, it's like this, this whole game, it's a stacked deck against us, right? So I don't know. I just thought that's interesting, you know, and, th and this is, and because of the suffering, this is why a lot of us go on the spiritual path. So these four, even though we don't like them, end up be, being our savior being our saviors, right? Right, with the bus, bus stopping by. So I wasn't very grateful for them when I was deep in my shit, but I'm now very grateful for all of the bad emotions and the suffering. Yeah. So getting back to what I was saying, it's, 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 okay to cultivate positive habits of mind, you know, and look, you know, change your, the way you look at things, right? But don't do what joy did. Don't do what joy did. And that's number two, where we're going to spiritual lesson number two. Don't repress, don't repress our painful thoughts, our, our painful feelings. Don't disown, abandon, hate, repress, suppress them. You know, there, there's a scene where Joy's like, oh, I can't, Riley doesn't need, need this, uh, I forget what it was, but this bad emotion, quote unquote. So they, they you know, the emotions are, are like in these glass balls, colorful balls. And, Joy's like, okay, and the, she like jettisons that, the, that, that bad feeling to um, someplace, the vault, they call it, where, where they get stored up, you know. And that's what happens to us when we, when we, I'm going to just step out here for a second. When we, when we deny, disown, you know, uh, repress, We, that's the joys of doing this live in the street, right? You never know what you're going to get. So most of us, we, well, what resists persists, right? It's like when we try and resist or abandon or whatever, uh, hide our thoughts. Or... Ah, ah, right, right. They, they come roaring, they come roaring out of us, right? In a few weeks or months or, or days or whatever, like that motorcycle. Rawr. It's like, you know, you, you're holding beach balls. It's like you're taking these, you're taking sadness, anger, and oh yeah, I mean, I did this as a, as a kid. Shame, fear, and you're just, you're, you're pushing them under, underwater in, in, the, in the pool of, in, in the vault of your subconscious. You're repressing them and then 
one of these days it's gonna you know it's gonna it, it's gonna go right it's gonna go you're gonna get triggered right you're gonna get the the trigger buttons we have basically we should act this would actually be a really good um spiritual practice for the creative types out there uh see if you could maybe download an image of and maybe make buttons of these and anxiety too anxiety is fear fear of future um or just fear but we should make like buttons and in and, and if you want to do this you should put you know put the button you know where the buttons or, or i don't know put them underneath your shoe. i don't know you don't want to walk around but it could be a fun exercise to do is you have these buttons on you or, or metaphorically think of them and you, you just you're going out you're going through your day and something happened you know that you get that email boom anger comes you lose your job you get the fear you know somebody passes away sadness you fucked up something <laughs> embarrassment or you said something stupid or whatever did something stupid or and you're you know worried about the future but but it got to get to get so so these things get banished from our consciousness you know from the present moment and and this goes on for years and years as in our childhood and teenage years riley's 13 okay um and we see in the climax when riley has that panic attack we see those beach balls go you know, those this cascade of old hidden they call them riley's secrets you know right or it's part of her secrets i think or but just her hidden emotions her shadow her pain body you know things that she's ashamed of or 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 she fears having this these emotions these bad emotions and that this that she gets flooded with them with her panic attack you know and that's what happens to us when, when we get triggered all these old emotions that that we stored in our subconscious come psh, psh. okay so that's one of the things that we do on the spiritual path is that we we start healing them healing the shadow healing the pain body oh and and when we when we jettison them when, when we do what joy did don't don't do what joy does when we banish these thoughts that's how the shadow and pain bodies are created okay so so part of the spiritual path is we stop doing that we start we stop doing that even with new emotion or new things that happen to us but we and we also process the past pain okay which i'm going to get into um because many many of us who go, go on a spiritual path we only want to deal with the good feelings we only want to deal with this with joy with glad happiness peace we don't we don't want to do deal with this right sorry if you don't then then this spiritual path is not for you it's just uh, that's just what the deal is okay if you just want to re if you just want to be spiritual bypass you know i'm adding a new character here 
It's called spiritual bypass. You know, right here. Well, I'm adding a new character to the film. Spiritual bypass. And many of us go through it. I mean, I certainly have had a spiritual bypass character in me. You know. Oh, I, I'll, I'll mantra, you're, you're boiling inside. Oh, I'll mantra away this, this feeling. That's bypassing. You know, when, after you calm down and chill, you know. I mean, you could, if, if, as long as you're present with it, doing the mantra, okay, it's not spiritual bypassing. But a lot of us do use spirit, uh, 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 spiritual practices such as mantras, even meditation, even um, watching YouTube videos. You know, I don't want to deal with, I don't want to deal with my anger, so I'm going to watch a YouTube video. I don't want to deal with my sadness, my depression. I'm going to watch a YouTube video. You know, I don't want to deal with all this stuff. So, you know, that's, and it's inside you in the present moment. That's a, that could be a form of spiritual bypassing. So that's why awareness, that's why, that's why learning how to sort of reparent yourself is, is crucial. Okay. I mean, I used to do that. I used to watch, I used to be, you know, feeling anxious or fearful. And I'd watch Eckhart Tolle videos and and sort of banish it into the back of my head well i had to deal with that eventually you know i mean i caught myself and so i stopped doing it because this spirituality to me is is if you want to be a free liberated being you have to heal your shadows you got to face them you got to heal the pain bodies and way to do that is face is by facing it, you know, by accepting it. I mean, many of us, I mean, our pain bodies were created, you know, in shadows. They come out of innocence, you know, when we were kids, you know, Riley was, I don't know, I don't know if she was seven or eight or nine, I don't know, nine in the first film. Now she's a teenager. You know, that's a lot of our pain bodies were were formed in our childhood. Out of in, create they were created out of innocence. You know, we didn't know how to, you know, we didn't know how to cope with with trauma, with abuse with the crazy, just, just with dysfunctional parents. I mean, I didn't, I mean, if there's people out there who, who you were as children and, and you, you could deal with it, God bless you. But I know most of you didn't know how to do it, didn't know how to cope. So we created coping mechanisms. We created strategies, you know, to sort of deal with it, to, to sort of feel safe or, or, you know, even if it was messed up way, right? Even if our strategies were messed up, it, they, were, they were just ways, you know, because it, it came out of innocence. We didn't know any better, you know? And then, so now, now that you, you're on the path, you bring unconditional love you, to your, to, to, I mean, I'm kind of getting ahead on one of the lessons, but which is, which is fine. You bring unconditional love to anger and sadness and fear 
and anxiety and embarrassment and jealousy. And ennui, you know. Eh, maybe not the ennui. <laughs> just let him, let ennui just be. No, I'm just joking. Of course, ennui too. Um, bring motherly love. They just, they, they, we, we banish them. So they need, they just want to be seen and heard again. And yes, it's going to be pain, painful. That's why I love the term pain bodies that Eckhart Tolle came up with, you know, cause they don't feel good. Go, re, you know, doing the shadow work, doing the pain. It doesn't feel good. All right, number three. So fear of being alone. Okay, th this is kind of the fear that fuels the plot. Riley's fear of losing her friends. And um, so she tries to become friends with older kids. So this is kind of what fuels it. You know, they took in, I don't know, Buddhism or Hinduism or whatever ism, uh, non-duality you know you know fear and desire is talked a lot about right fear and desire so we could say i mean a lot of our desires are based on a fear fear of you you know not being enough or having enough or not you know so our desires are i need this i need that so after awakening you're um you know you dissolve you learn to dissolve those fears because you know, after you awaken, you, you're you're never alone. I mean, you know, I mean, the integration process, you, you flip back and forth. But as you become rooted, you're never alone. You're whole because you're you know that you're truth, you know. And after awakening, I mean, I don't know, you you some of you could make some comments if this if you've experienced this. You're, you're, you don't, you don't mind being alone anymore. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't mind. Um, there's th that lonely, loneliness gets, uh, uh, dissolved. And I would even say a lot of us who go on the spiritual path, you know, we need time to be alone, you know, to, to heal and work on ourselves and just you know starting on this new hero's adventure or spiritual hero's adventure um and to do do the work riley also wants to fit in uh and again when you when you awaken when you go on the spiritual path at, at least you know you're like, ah, I don't give a shit. I mean, there'll come a point where I, I, you know, I don't care about fitting in anymore. You know, you're just, you're just you, you know, there's none of this fear of what other people think. If there was, I wouldn't be making these videos, you know? Okay, so uh, number four. So anxiety, part one of the plot is anxiety sort of they want to create a, a new self for Riley so so anxiety jealousy embarrassment and um we ends up like pushing these guys out of the way right we got music you never know what you're gonna get yeah, I love it. I love shooting outside because, you, you know, I'm constantly surprised and I did just wonderful what shows up. So they kind of take over and start creating a new self for Riley, right? that fear you want to make Riley a winner 
make her like make the team a hockey team that's part of the plot make her fit in feel important feel special right that's what drives us a lot not only drives this film but it drives our lives fear of not being special and we're all and we're always disappointed because we're never going to be happy because what we're we we, we want to be special by you know like riley getting on the team being friends with the older girls you know external things you get this new relationship oh, a little clanky a little clanky we want to get the new relation you know this person is going to make me happy this job is going to make me happy having this money is going to make me happy ha having this car this vacation this blah 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 is going to making me happy all this external things you know and it's never you're never going to be fulfilled until until you awaken and to where to your true eternal self where all fulfillment is okay you are fulfilled in being there's a peace you, you i mean you you interact with the world and you you know do your thing and you could you could accumulate some things or things or but it that fear anxiety is not driving it this is not driving it it's the peace it's it's you know maybe some enthusiasm maybe some joy but but a joy that doesn't have an opposite joy of uh of being see i i i have a lot of joy making these videos it's fun i mean actually i have a blast you know so thank you for watching um yeah the peace is the the the, the peace that passeth understanding you know when you're just ah peace you know Un uncaused joy uncaused you know it's flows from you not from the outside so uh Let's see, Riley says, so number five. Um, so Riley's sort of like her bad self-talk mantra is, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. In fact, uh, I don't know, what is that? Is that fear or anxiety? I don't know but just not feeling good enough. It's this bad mantra she has. And joy tell, so joy tells anxiety, you don't, you don't get to choose who Riley is, okay? Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, the truth is, the truth is most of us have uh, uh, anxiety and fear and anger anger and sadness and envy let's just put them all together these all do and tell us who, who we are you know i mean a lot of us we're 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 like we're we're constantly you know We move throughout our day, you know, our years are, are, you know, with those characters, sort of like puppets. We're like a, it's like these characters are holding a, the puppet strings, right? It's like these characters are puppet, puppet masters to us. They're kind of just like, we're kind of like, you know, going through like, you know. So depressed. I mean, I was depressed for years. Um, 
anxiety says, and now this is key, and I kind of told, mentioned this before, but anxiety tells joy. She says, I'm just trying to protect her. Wow. I'm just trying to protect Riley. Anxiety. See, out of innocence. So you could look at your pain bodies, especially anxiety and fear. And you know, everyone actually, anger, sadness, jealousy, embarrassment, shame. You could look at them as, you know, they're just, they were just, you, you, they were formed just trying to protect you. So it's out of innocence, okay? And I love it when Joy, Joy puts anxiety on the special chair, you know? It's like the special meditation chair. Calm, calm down. And that's why actually, you know, meditation is important. Not, not just for connecting the source, but also calming the mind, you know? I mean, it could take years, but calming this, these, these calming these critters down, cal calming these. These wonderful, beautiful emotions that are now we're ready to say, you know, bye bye. Bye bye. But we needed them to go on the spiritual path, but they're no longer serving us. So we're dissolving them. We're, we're kind of putting each one on the special chair, right? Bye-bye. And weirdly enough, and I've had this happen to me, tell me in the comments if you've experienced this. When you've like, dissolve certain pain bodies uh, that aren't serving you and you're so glad that they're gone. But in this weird way, you have like a little, I don't know, grief for them or for that. It's like this old grief of an old, old you dissolved, but, but there's like this weird little grief, grief that comes up. I don't know, I've, I've experienced that. Let me know if anybody has experienced that too. But you're glad and then it goes away and then you're like i'm so glad i don't have that pain body anymore or it's not as big anymore you know stuff like that um so in the end you know in the end the great climactic scene when riley's having her panic attack and you see you got to be honest with you, yourself too and you and all these emotions come, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And instead of like fighting and which in a way they were kind of, you know, it was them against them. Embarrassment and joy and sadness kind of helped each other. They bonded, but they all embrace. There's, an, there's a hug, embrace hug at the end. And, you know, so I'm 56, so I'm like, I'm like, you know, crying, you know, and there's like, you know, people around me, you know, people, you know, parents with their kids crying and I don't know, teenagers and 20 somethings crying, you know, girls, here's a 56 year old man. Going, <laughs> very powerful scene, but it's very, it's very, um, it's beautiful. And I think the reason people cry, whether they know it intellectually or not, but they feel it on a deep level. And this is how, why stories and film have power, power. They have that catharsis because they go through the, they, they bypass the mind and go to the heart. Right? So we feel, we sense, that we need to accept our, I could, I've actually been, 
getting a little emotional over here. We gotta accept. When we accept our, our, all our parts, you know? Cause this is us. <laughs> oh, shit. So when we accept all of our, uh, our parts, that's when we become whole. That's when true healing can happen. We accept it. Very powerful. And it, you know, it doesn't mean you can't, you know, self-improvement is, is healthy, you know, but loving, loving, and I would say unconditional. I would say unconditional love to your, to all your parts. You know. Yeah. And then that that's how we transmute them. That's how we we become alchemists, where we dissolve our presence. Our, you know the our. Our eternal truth transmutes these energies. I'm not saying that you can't have a healthy sadness anymore, but the fears and the anxieties and the jealousy, especially the jealousy and embarrassment, anger, especially anger. Anger is very, very, you know, toxic. We, we dissolve that energies. Transmute them into peace and compassion and love and kindness. You know, we, we, we transmute it until one day in, in, inside out. And I just love it because it's an inside job. So we inside out and then when we heal, then we emanate the peace throughout to the world. So inside out. Number three, this is just my, uh, you know, I'm sure they're going to do one when, when she's 17 or going to college or something like that, Riley. But I'm the spiritual inside out number three, the spiritual one, you know, the enlightened one is, is, is just joy. You know, again, not, not like you can't. You know, just joy for the, you know, happiness, peace, love, uncondi unconditional love, bliss, peace, contentment, okay? That doesn't have an opposite. And, and that's it. That would be the only, you know, character. And I would challenge people out there who are like, oh, wow, anger is still good or anxiety is okay as long as, you know, you know, whatever. I'm like, hey, okay, you do your path, you know. You know, I, I think you, I think, I mean, this is, everyone's on their path. Everybody has in this incarnation, but I truly believe that we could be really whole and get to a place where, where these are all dissolved or they're very, very small, you know? Yeah. So that's just, that's just me. Because I think some people out there, I think, I think there's like a little ego or like, or afraid. It's like, well, who would I, it's like a spiritual ego lurking behind you saying, well, you know, I mean, who, who would I be if I, if I, who would I be if I dissolved all my pain bodies? You know, it's like you have this sort of a identity of somebody who's who's healing all the time or, or somebody who's still still broken, you know? So I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, yeah, so embrace, embrace, 
all of you and you know go to, so go to healers go to do shadow work there's books on it i mean i've been reading this the shadow work journal i think it's excellent i'm going to do a post on that in the next couple of weeks or so um you know there's books on the shadow there's you know read Acker Tolle's book about you know the power of now and the new earth he talks about pain bodies you know stuff like that go to therapy if you need to you know these especially if you experience trauma you know I mean Riley you know Riley's still kind of messed up in a way but her family you know she comes from a pretty stable family unit right many of us we didn't have this that the, the the kind that kind of family so doing this trauma you know we had a lot of trauma so doing trauma work you know sometimes you need professionals so you know do it you know and healing modalities such as emdr and eft and there's other things out there you know just do, do research you, you you could you know or if if you if you have done healing you know and you used certain modalities leave them in the comments uh that has been helpful for you for other people because that that could be helpful all right and a couple of little funny bits uh nostalgia as the grandma there's like this running joke where she, nostalgia this grandmother keeps showing up and they're like not not yet not yet I kind of love that because I love, love the word nostalgia because nostalgia means like homesickness, like a home, you know, you know, nostalgia. And, uh, anyway, they also had this in the vault. They had this big shadow guy. I forgot what his name was, but it was a it's this big lurking shadow guy kind of like, ah, and, and I mean, that to me, like visualized. You know, I, I'm like, shit, man. I've seen that shadow in me before. Um, and also when, when Riley, like, develops sarcasm, that's, that's pretty funny, right? Right? That's pretty funny. You know, where she's like, oh, yeah. She, she uh, liked this band that is for middle schoolers and the old, older girls go oh that's middle school stuff and she's she flips it and becomes sarcastic oh yeah this band i think it was called the uh, get up and glow i actually love that name of the that band that fictional band that get up and glow that's what that uh, get up and glow yeah i love that um finally i just inside out so it's an inside job out. I just love the titles. I mean, a quiet place, quiet place, day one, meditate, quiet place. Maxine, uh, I don't know if I should comment on that one. I don't, I don't know much about that movie, but I think it's uh, a little risque, especially with three X's in there. So I won't comment on that, but I like kinds of kindness too, kinds and kindness. I don't really know what that film is about, but I think it's the, about three three parts of a three different film or something. I don't know, but I just love the title, Kinds of Kind of, because that's, it went, be kind to yourself, be kind to your, be kind, be kind to these parts, be kind, be loving, give these hugs, okay? All right, okay, I think that's all I got. So love you and until we meet again next time in the inside out baby of the now moment.